Lebanon. Morning from The Rock here in Midrand. I walked in this morning and it's a tense mood here at The Rock. Um, I guess that's what people have been saying for the last few days about being here. But definitely historic, it's definitely tense and I think confirms at least what some of us have said before this election. Uncertainty has been a, a major feature of this election and it's even an anxious election now and it's tense here at The Rock. A few things I want to talk about today. Not much has changed in terms of the number Numbers from what we saw last night or in the last uh, little insert that you've seen to this morning. Um, but there are a few things that I think we can talk about. Voter turnout is one of them. Um, the national question is another one that I'll come to. Um, and whether South Africa is taking a bit of a hop to the right uh, looking at the results. And then of course the CSR has released their seat allocation predictions which I think are really interesting to break down. So let's start then with the issue of voter turnout. Uh, from the IC's briefing last night and from what we've seen of the results coming through, it looks like we're going to have a lower voter turnout than in the previous election. Uh, we don't know exactly where that's going to be right now, um, but somewhere in the region of around 60% is what I've heard going around this morning. What does this mean? So I think in this election we have to consider the kind of, well it's considered in every discussion about voter turnout, um, are the kind of administrative uh, glitches relating to being able to go and cast your vote. What we saw in this election was something we've never seen in a previous election, which is pretty dr dramatic changes to how we vote um, and how the elections uh, will be conducted quite close to the election. We had a third ballot put on, um, which meant that voting was a lot slower, which meant that the IEC had to kind of consider a whole lot of new um, issues around the third ballot, right? Um, so that threw, I think, a, a big, that was a big part of the long snaking queues that we saw. Uh, that was a part of the administrative issues. Then we had this issue of only being able to vote in your registered station, which I think is another thing that's going to impact the voter turnout in this election. Um, and maybe people not having checked that far enough in advance in order to go and re-register to apply for, uh, not re-register, to, to, to apply for um, a change of voting station to make sure that they're at the voting station that they registered at on the day of election. So I think all of those kind of, and, and there's a range of other administrative practical issues that come into the voter turnout conversation. But then I still come back to the point that voter turnout must be read in, a, in conjunction with the administrative practical issues as a political issue and as a political statement that many people are making um, and I and I do come back around to this um, to this point right you need to read the politics of voter turnout and if we initially thought voter turnout was going to be higher um, and now we're getting to a point where we see as the votes come in that it's not going to be higher that actually there's going to be another drop-off which follows the trend over the last few elections of a drop-off of voter turnout um, then we need to we need to talk about that politically right um, and I think, again, something that we've spoken about. What are the political alternatives? What are the political options? What are the options on the ballot that make people say, yes, I want to go out and vote for this political party? Or do people feel, a large majority of South Africans, a large section of South Africans feel that there aren't enough options for them to go out on election day and cast their ballot? What does that mean for the status of our democracy, um, our liberal democracy, the democracy that we have right now? now, right? Um, and I think I said this uh, yesterday at some point that our democracy is quite a simple concept, but when it comes down to looking at the administrative parts of it and how it all comes together, it's actually really complex and I think we've seen this kind of play out here. But to return to that question of political options, political alternatives, who is shaping our future political imaginaries? And I'll say imaginaries because there isn't just one, but many. Um, many forms of political imagination that uh, need to come into the South African political scene. Linked to that then is looking at the results as they stand now, looking at the predictions. Is there a hop to the right happening in South African politics? I think a lot of the parties um, that are doing well at the moment um, 
uh, and these can be in regions, in, in provinces, or at a national level uh, when you look at the numbers. But there is a conservative element in a lot of the parties that we've seen make an impact in this election, right? Uh, so I think we need to consider whether there is a further hop to the right. One of the important points of this election is that there weren't um, a lot of left options on the ballot, right? Um, and, and that kind of says a lot about where our politics is, where the political parties are um, in, in relation to what South Africans need, right? Um, so I think, I think we are seeing this play out, right? Uh, there wasn't a firm socialist uh, option on the ballot, right? Um, the, the EFF is talked about most prominently in the role of the left on the South African political scene. Um, so that's, that's part of the conversation we need to be having about the political options, political alternatives, and whether we're taking a small jump to the right here um, in terms of conservative politics, but also in terms of the kind of economic policies that we see come out from political parties uh, in their manifestos, um, social uh, policies, uh, and political and I think a lot of these parties are a mixed bag, um, so we need to we need we need to definitely not make uh, kind of flippant claims that this party is on the right, this party is on the left, but kind of analyze what it is um, that they've put on the table. But I do think that there is an element of conservative uh, conser conservative politics that has come through, and if we look at what we see now in terms of the results, and of course we're still waiting, uh, but maybe that's something that we should start uh, talking about. That brings me to my next point, which is that there was a lot of talk from, well, Raisam Zansi kind of coined this uh, idea that 2024 is our 1994. And I'm not going to get into the merits and demerits of that as a campaign strategy, but what I, what I will say is that the sense in which it is our 1994 is that the idea of the national question, the national question is on the table very prominently in this, uh, in this election and from what we're seeing of the results so far. The national question has defined so much of South African politics, uh, particularly in the anti-party struggle, um, and is something that liberation movements had to identify themselves in relation to a certain position on the national question. That is a position in relation to race, to gender, to class, to ethnicity. Um, and I would say in this election, also a relationship to uh, the idea of being a citizen. So the idea that I'm trying to put across here is that the question that's back on the table is, what is the nation? Who makes up the nation, right? Um, and I think from the party positions that we've seen come into this election, the kind of conversations that have shaped uh, very big parts of this election, I think the national question is very much something we have to talk about and something that is on the table. We'll maybe talk more about that uh, in later episodes. A couple more things then, moving away from, from that whole conversation. The CSIR uh, has put out their seat allocation predictions, and I think it's very interesting. There are a lot of small parties that might be getting uh, seats, one or two seats, based on their predictions. Some parties are going to fall away, according to the CSR. Parties like COPE, um, that burst onto the scene after, um, well, after Polokwane uh, and the fractures in the ANC then, might not have any seats seats uh, in, in the National Assembly. Um, so some parties will fade away, others will do more poorly. The ANC is looking like it will lose a bunch of seats and of course we see this um, in the percentage results that we've been watching on board but also now with the with the CSR seat allocation predictions we have a clearer sense of how many seats and how many seats will be needed in order to elect a president um, at the National Assembly. So I think those, those are really interesting. What stuck out for me from what I saw already, and I haven't uh, seen a report yet, just to be clear on that, um, is that parties like COPE will fall away, is parties like Freedom Front Plus having less seats. Um, it's the EFF holding stable, but perhaps losing a few seats. Um, it's the ANC losing a chunk of seats uh, in, in, in the National Assembly. And then these small parties that might get a few seats, and they will come to play a big role depending on how the coalition negotiations go, so both in terms of electing a president 
and, and then forming a government, but also in terms of how they take their manifestos, how they take their policy positions, how they take their politics to parliament and play them out there. Um, so I think it would be interesting if those predictions do hold, uh, which of those small parties will end up um, in, in the National Assembly. And of course, MK is, uh, will have uh, representation in the National Assembly. That's all from me for now. Uh, catch you guys later. Spread the fire.